This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode. Of Mood Prep, my name is Dave Nixon and uh, we've just finished up the Enneagram for two weeks which gave me plenty of time to, to think about all sorts of other topics and subjects to talk about but um, if you haven't already then by all means I'd recommend to go back and listen from the start of the wisdom of the Enneagram and then potentially do the Enneagram test if that is of interest to you um, after after you hear that podcast, it goes for about 10 minutes like all my podcasts do and then uh, from there I break down each type. Now once again this week I'll put in the... Um, the the only other thing they need to add in the groups, if you haven't already, jump on Facebook, search Mood Prep Online, um, jump in the free group there, um, and uh, in there will be a um, um, a link to do the test. Um, it costs like 12 bucks, takes 40 minutes, but there's a lot of insight that comes from that, even from the, the Rahiti um, team, R-H-E-T-I. Uh, anyway, that all that stuff aside, um, I've got to put the YouTube video of Sleeping at Last, which goes through each type as a song, which is very interesting. But let's move on. Enough of the Enneagram for now. Um, I also got some feedback. <laughs> Enough of the Enneagram. Let me say one more thing um, that uh, you guys enjoyed. Um, from a couple of you that you enjoyed more so some of the podcasts as more educational rather than just deep thinking um, as it was sort of uh, expressed to me. So if that's of interest to you, then I'll, I'll once again jump in the Facebook group because I'll, I'll put some um, questions in there this week that I would love to hear get some feedback on. Um, otherwise, that's it. Let's get rocking and rolling. So I came past this quote um, that I um, I haven't heard or seen before. And I'm not even sure. I mean, it was on Elliot Hulse's uh, Instagram page, and Elliot can be um, quite a divisive figure, um, and fair enough. But um, it uh, it definitely put a thought of mine, or a thought that I've had previously, um, in in a sentence quite well. And so I want to share that with you, and then I want to um, add some some I suppose personal touches. So the quote reads: "Life became simple when I decided to just let people misunderstand me." And that's a really powerful thing, hey? Like, just let people misunderstand me. And I remember, for me, one of the early times was when I just finished. I worked at a gym called Flames. And um, that was from when I was 15 to 21. And at 21, I recognized that there was no more growth for me there. There was no more growth for me there. And I, I had talked about different ways of doing so. And it was kind of, it was not encouraged, so to speak, unless it was the way that that person who ran that business perceived it as growth, which was basically living by his standards. Uh, at least that's the way I perceived it. And so I was like, well, I'm out. And so I got this opportunity to go and work with another gym, which I did. And after six months, I would come on as a partner. And so um, I was, uh, I was what, I was 21 at the time. And I, I went, and, went and worked there for, I was only there for four months in, in total before I started my own but um, when I made the decision that I'm like, this isn't for me, um, I don't I don't agree with the way they do things, I don't think they're doing things well, like, I can't be on the same bus if I don't agree with these people and where they're going, if they even are going anywhere. And so at the age of 21, I was like, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. And I had the opportunity to start my own thing, which I went on to do. And I remember um, speaking to, my friend was one of the owners, and her, her and her brother, and I told her that I'm look I'm I'm gonna finish up and I gave space, I gave notice. And um and she's like, I just don't understand why you would start something brand new when you've got something here that you know you you're gonna come on and own. And I'm like, Well, I you know, went on to try to explain it to her and uh she goes, It doesn't make sense to me and she went on to say, If maybe if you can't explain it very well, it's probably not something you should do And I just remember sitting there thinking, I go, I'm not gonna make decisions based on what you understand. And this was a really important distinction that I remember making back then and, and, and what Elliot shared was something very similar is that it's not your job for people to understand you. Now, it's good, but that that's up to them. Like for them to understand you is, is that's, that's their job. And so the power of just letting people misunderstand you is, is fucking freedom because when you sit there and you're trying to justify and explain to somebody, they hold the power because they can just decide not to if they don't want to. And so, so many of us may waste so much of our life trying to just get either approval, validation, understanding, um, validity or something based off people who are fucking set on never actually understanding us. 
And it has nothing to do with them. That's us. Like, why are we trying to do that? Why do we think that's so important? Why do we hold this person in, in such high regard that their their understanding of what we're communicating is more important than just being misunderstood? There's a lot of power in being misunderstood because it puts the ball back in their court rather than rather than being in your court trying try to understand. Because as soon as that happens, it's like, yeah, that's fine. You don't have to understand me. They're like, well, if I don't understand you and then here comes some sort of rebuttal, it's just like, that's your job. I don't think you really want to understand me. I don't think that's of interest to you. And then see what happens from there. But this 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 power, and I do call it a power because what it is, it's letting go. And it's taking responsibility and ownership for what you're responsible because that, that that's that's a big distinction right like when when somebody say misunderstands us and there is a difference like let's say somebody misunderstands us and then we're not explaining ourselves well then that, that's different but at the same time you can still be in that space and go yeah i just I, I don't feel like i need to explain myself and and so they're like well i feel like i deserve something it's like well they, they technically they don't Technically, they don't deserve anything. Um, although it's 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 up to you whether you want to put closure to it or whatever the case might be. I mean, there's so many, so many like variations to these types of situations. But the core message of all of this is to catch ourselves whenever we're trying to justify something to somebody, and just stop and think for a moment and go, "Would I do this to everyone?" And the answer is like, "No, I wouldn't." And why am I doing it to this person? Does this person have some sort of power over me that I've granted them? And if that's the case, why? Why have I given them that power? And the other thing is, do they actually want to understand me? And that's a question you can propose. Like that's 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 a powerful question in itself because people go, oh, I don't, that doesn't make sense, doesn't you know? And it's just like, and there's times where I've used this to 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 great utility where it's like, I don't think you want to understand. I don't think you want to see my point of view. And they'll potentially argue, and it's just like, well, what am I trying to say? And then see what they come up from there, and then that's why we can actually basically be chunking up to a to a common a commonality to to agree on something because at the core of it we we are we we do agree, but there's usually the details that we disagree on, and when we get caught in the details, we we actually get caught in the tree and not the forest. But the whole point of this would be to look at it and go, why am I in a space where I may feel the need to justify? or to to understand, to, to get someone to understand me when I'm not even sure if it's in my best interest or even in their interest to understand me, you know? And so the, the power of that is is really beautiful. And so when we, when we look at that, it allows us to be able to move on from relationships that no longer serve. And you could be on either side of that. I've been on either side of that, and I'm sure there's times in the future where that will be the case as well. The thing about it, though, is that life is so fluid, it's just when we catch ourselves being in a space where we continually feel like we need to justify ourselves, it, that becomes draining. It, it, it becomes like a almost a parent and child relationship, but often between colleagues or maybe between spouses or maybe between you know other family members. Maybe it's still our parents and we're well into our 20s, 30s and 40s, 50s and we're still having these conversations where we're trying to justify to our parents. I mean, I've had calls with people in their, in, in sessions and they're like, well, you know, they just, they just say this and it's just like, so what? They're like, well, you know, and the mum's, mum's, mum always has the last say. It's like, why is this bothering you? You're a 35-year-old. And that's, that's, I'm not judging you. I'm asking you, why is it bothering you? It's because a person still holds this person in a space of authority and judgment and then holds their judgment to such high regard that they're still trying to get validation and approval. And then what happens is that this person grabs that and they go to a workspace and there's somebody there that represents as their mother, as their mother figure, because they don't have that mother there anymore. So they go somewhere else and they represent that person as their mother and they have the same fucking issue with that person. And they're like, oh my God, I can't stand her, but I still want that person or him. It depends. It could be anyone. I still want that person's approval and justification and so, or, or approval and um, validity. And so I find myself having to justify everything. And sometimes it's even when it's not even asked. I just will start justifying. It's like I didn't ask, right? So it's really interesting. It's just a beautiful opportunity for two things. One, to catch ourselves when we find ourselves justifying. It's like, do I need to, do, am I handing my fucking power over doing this? That's one. And two, stepping into the unknown of just going, you're welcome to misunderstand me. It won't change my life whatsoever. And that's not a coming from an arrogant space. It's coming from this centered space of going, it's not my job for you to understand me. 
Now, not to be confused, and I, I, you know, I had this conversation with my spouse just earlier, not to be confused with the ability to coach and adapt to learning preferences, so people can understand that, that that's 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 fine. There's there's, it's two different conversations, but the key thing, the key fucking thing, is when we catch ourselves in situations like this, handing our fucking power over, and then trying to do other shit to make up for it to make us happy, no matter what it is. Take your power back, and it sounds so cliche, but the thing is that it's so fucking true, is that we're still handing our power over in certain stages of our life. We're leaking power. It's like, take that shit back. That's ours. Whoever tells you otherwise is is a, is a fucking scared liar. And that's that. So, the power there. Team, on that note, I am done. Thank you very much for tuning in this episode. If you found this podcast beneficial, it would mean the world to me if you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. Um, but on that note, I am done. Like I said, <laughs> until tomorrow, peace and pizza. Keep today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. To be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned. Be unbridled and unburned.